Så där då, då är vi tillbaka efter en eh, kort liten paus. Och nästa bolag har jag med mig på Teams och det är Arctic Blue Beverages and I have the CEO Valtteri Eroma with me on link. Hi Valtteri, can you hear me? I hear you very well, Kaisa. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. So I'm going to let you do your presentation and then towards the end I'm going to come back to ask you a couple of questions. Over to you. Excellent, thank you. So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Walter Eroma, and I'm the CEO of Arctic Blue Beverages. And um, I'm here today uh, give you, to give you a presentation of, of our company, our products, and, um, and also our plans for the future. Here you see a nice image starting the presentation, which is one of our brand images. Um, and uh, this is the style we very much reflect in all, all our materials, and you will hear shortly why. Usually, I start all the presentations with a brand video, which explains our brand and uh, tells about us and why we do things. Uh, but due to the uh, legislation in, in, in Sweden, uh, I, I, I took, a, took that away, and I, I will just show you a few visuals here on the screen, which really reflect our brand and uh, how we usually look out to our customers. Then we can start with our story, how it all began. And uh, it all started with a, with a mad vision, a vision to ca capture the Arctic nature into the bottle. And so our flagship product Arctic Blue Chin was born in 2018. It instantly gained a lot of international recognition. In the World Spirits Awards, it was awarded the best chin of 2018 and Spirit of the Year 2018. Arctic Blue Chin Navy strength followed the next year and gained similar traction and many awards globally. In example, winning the double gold in San Francisco World Spirits competition and the best of the show award in the same competition in 2019. This all really gave a great start for our company. Our mission is to craft the world's best beverages from carefully selected natural Nordic ingredients. Wild blueberries, northern botanicals, organic oats, and pure spring water. Our brand promise is to offer this unique taste of Nordic nature to our customers whenever and wherever you are. Our special ingredient is wild blueberry, also called bilberry, that grows in the wild forests of Finland. And our special distilling method without chill filtering preserves the taste of our Nordic ingredients. Thanks to this, all the natural aromas, pectins, and essential oils of wild blueberries are preserved in our chins. This is also why Arctic Blue Chin turns into this elegant cloudy white color when topped with ice and tonic water. Oops. Few words about innovation. We prioritize innovation. We study trends and we invest in experimenting because we want to create the world's best craft beverages. Arctic Blue Oat is a great example of this, the world's first non-dairy gin-based oat liquor made from Arctic Blue Gin and organic Finnish oats. 100% dairy-free, gluten-free and vegan alternative to cream liquors. 
We are also working on oat RTDs, so-called ready-to-drink products, that will launch during this year. The first oat RTD product is actually already selling in Finland, and the plan is to expand to Sweden throughout the year. Then, how we produce our products. So, our distilled products and liquors are produced by our contract distillery in Ilomantsi, Finland, and our oat RTDs by our contract factory in Kouvola, Finland. All the products produced and manufactured in Finland. The current production capacity for the Arctic Blue products is about 1.5 million liters of gin and 400,000 liters of oat liquor annually. And the product capacity for our oat RTDs, these uh, ready to drink products, is 2.5 million liters annually. And here you, by the way, you can see our master distiller Asko Ryynänen doing his magic. Our business model is about producing and selling premium craft beverages, both through traditional distribution and e-commerce. We differentiate our award-winning products through high quality, natural ingredients, unique taste, and also appealing design. Our products are supported with excellent marketing, including social media and point of sale material. And on the right, you can see some of the awards that, that our products have been gaining. How we sell our products. So our products are being sold through traditional indirect distribution channels in all regions uh, except in Finland where we sell well we sell where we sell direct outside of Finland the products are sold to importers and distributors with proven experience of brand building in example in Japan the multi Michelin jar a multi Michelin star restaurant chain Robuchon is distributing our products. And you can see a few, few of the core examples on the, on the logo mapping on the right as well. For each market, we have a clear plan for e commerce that is shared also with our distributing partners. Our products exist today in over 25 online stores. Then a few words about marketing and uh, branding of our products. <clears throat> and again, this would have been a lovely opportunity to show a brand video or marketing video, but I'll try to explain it uh, verbally uh, the best possible way. So we execute both uh, global brand driven marketing campaigns and then local country-specific marketing campaigns. And uh, in example, in 2019, uh, our global brand-driven marketing campaign became a real hit. It was recognized in several medias globally and reached about 233 million people. In the campaign, we set up a pop-up bar in the North Pole for a day and whoever succeed visiting it would be awarded a lifetime supply of gin. No one showed up, but we made it. Then a few words about the product families we have. We have two product families. 
Arctic Blue Products, which is our current established premium product family. In example, Arctic Blue Gin. Uh, a lot of visuals and, and story about nature, pure ingredients, purity and, and the Nordic design. And then we have our new uh, Arctic, sorry, our new Hangout uh, product family, which is more youth and urban focused product family. And this starts with our hard oat RTDs. Here more in detail, our award winning products, Arctic Blue products. So uh, Arctic Blue Gin, the, the product that started the whole story. Then Arctic Blue, Arctic Blue Gin, Navy Strength. Uh, then the innovative new product, Arctic Blue Oat. And then uh, Arctic Blue Tonic, a perfect match with our gins. This was a product we wanted to develop just to have a right part, right um, um, product with with that works perfectly with our uh, with our taste profile of our chips. And then on the next slide, on this slide, you can see our latest uh, new products that already uh, gained a lot of awards from the most respected competitions in the world. Starting with Arctic Blue Legacy. Uh, Arctic Blue Legacy is a uh, barrel aged gin sold in this unique glass bottle designed by famous Finnish uh, designer uh, Timo Sarpaneva. This product is targeted to the ultra premium category and, and packed into a pre prestige uh, handmade uh, wooden gift package. It already won gold at the International Wine and Spirits Competition last year and double gold in the San Francisco World Spirits Competition this year. This will be a limited series of few thousand units yearly. Then in the middle, um, you can see Arctic Blue Gin Rose, which is our entry into this fast growing category of pink gins. Taste profile is very similar to Arctic Blue, with a hint of cinnamon rose petals, both in the scent and in the taste. Cinnamon rose is the only rose that grows widely in the in the forests of Finland, so it was a perfect uh, fit to this product. The beautiful red color comes from the wild blueberries, and this product also won double gold in San Francisco World Spirits competition this year. And then last, but definitely not least, our Hangout RTD. So this novelty product is our first oat-based mild alcohol beverage, which expands our range of, uh, of oat-based products. The first launch version is uh, vanilla, and it's already selling in Finland, as said. Uh, the taste profile is a combination of Arctic Blue Gin and organic oats and the pure Finnish water. The product is packed into this sustainable Tetra Pak carton. Uh, in the future, we will be expanding this product range also by launching new flavors and new packaging sizes. Few words about our markets where we are in. Currently, our products are sold in 16 countries. You can see the list there, but the big few in Sweden, Finland, Norway, Denmark, uh, also uh, France and Spain, Switzerland, and then uh, strongly in Asia, so Japan, Singapore, Hong Kong, and, and the latest addition and expanding fast is also Australia. Uh, we have a very high profile distribution partners in traditional retail, in travel retail, and also in the uh, e-commerce. Then a uh, few words about the market potential and the market growth potential. So uh, the global gene market value in 2021 
was 14.5 billion USD, and the global uh, liquor market 118 billion USD. And both premium gin and liquor market is growing. In example, the estimation, estimated growth of uh, premium gin se segment is over 10% annually. For us, the most growth potential is in our boat portfolio due to the uh, growing demand of vegan products and also our special expertise in developing oat-based alcohol products. So, reasons to invest into Arctic Blue beverages. We have a premium brand and very unique story, which works in the global scale. We have a premium portfolio of award-winning products and innovative oat portfolio, which is our platform for growth. Then we have a very good foothold in put and footfold and potential in the markets that we are in, in Europe and Asia. And this is supported also with our e-commerce strategy. The IPO share issue was actually oversubscribed last week, which shows a great interest towards the company, even during these very difficult times. And the uh, expected first day of trading is the 12th of May on the NASDAQ First North growth market in Sweden. So with this, I would like to thank you and over to you, Kaisa. Thank you very much for that presentation, Valtteri. I have uh, got a couple of questions from the uh, viewers. So let's start off with the first one. So you're raising around 28 million on your way to NASDAQ First North. How are you going to uh, utilize this money? Good question. So um, as, as said, we are uh, we are planning to expand, so expand our current market where we are in and also in the new markets that we are planning to go. So 70% of, of, the, of the, um, the funds will be used into scaling our current markets and then opening new markets. So this means building uh, go-to-market strategies in these areas and, and executing these, these strategies. And then 30% is very much related to our new products. So uh, building innovative new products, uh, studying trends, um, R&D, that takes a lot of effort. So 30% so for, for like uh, products and 70% into uh, car expanding current markets and, and, and opening new markets. Thanks for clarifying that. And uh, like you said, the first day of uh, trading is on the 12th of May. What can you tell us about the uh, commitments from investors so far? Well, as mentioned that the, um, the, uh, the subscription was already over oversubscribed uh, last week. So, so um, for us during these quite difficult times in the global economy, I think it's a very good sign uh, that, that we, are, we are a very interesting company and our goals are the right ones. Uh, Valtteri, you know that capital markets are quite tense right now with the uh, rate hikes and then the uh, war, war in Ukraine. Why is now the best timing for you guys to go uh, public? Uh, well, uh, you never know how the how the how the markets markets work. So definitely, this is not the best time. But uh, but this was like uh, part of our long term plan. How we are planning to to go forward and and uh, and yeah. If you start to wait for the perfect moment, it usually never comes. So we just need to progress based on our plans and, and go forward. And and I'm very happy that that we succeeded this well. Better now than never. Exactly. So last year you made uh, almost 9 million in revenue and a result of minus 15. Uh, someone wants to know what is needed for you guys to break even? That's a good question and that uh, we get asked that quite a lot. Uh, but uh, 
I would like to bring this back to the uh, the growth plans that we have. So, so naturally we are after building a sustainable business, but at the same time uh, we are investing heavily into growth and uh, expanding our markets, uh, bringing new products to the markets and. And uh, yeah, at, at this point, we are not after the break-even point. So, so that, that will come once we are ready. And also, I would like to know, since you're operating in uh, quite a heavily regulated market and it differs from countries to countries, what is your um, thoughts on that issue? Uh, yeah, uh, this is this is this is a very good question as well, and it it varies a lot based to the based to the market we are in. I would see that as a, as a as a risk, but but I see that it, it is very much like a, a thing we need to know. We need to be able to understand the dynamic in each market and and act act accordingly. And this is also why we we do. Uh, um, spend a lot of time selecting our partners and distributor, distributor partners in each, each country because this way we can then uh, use their ex expertise within within each country and, and and their understanding of the legislation and so forth. But yeah, for sure it, it varies a lot based to based to countries between like Finland, Sweden, Australia and so forth. Does your marketing strategy also vary country from country? It does, and, and this this I would like to lead back to the to, to the marketing slide I, I showed. So so we have this kind of brand level uh, global uh, uh, campaigns, which are usually uh, doesn't. I mean, those are like global, so those work in the each, each country. But then then within the countries, then we do have like a very specific local marketing campaigns which then relate to let's say legislation or what product we are offering there and so forth so it is very much like a, uh, it's up to the country where we are in and Valtteri can you tell us a bit about the uh, company's current shareholder base is there anything you would like to highlight there like celebrities or, or things like that <laughs> exactly uh, yeah, I, I would maybe we have very committed. Let's say that we have very committed uh, shareholders, and 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 they have they have a lot of expertise uh, in various areas of business, which is really like beneficial for us. But uh, uh, I would I would not like highlight any names from that. But very committed uh, owners. Mm. And what would you say um, is your company's uh, biggest <clears throat> challenge the, uh, that you guys are facing right now? Well, naturally, the economy right now is quite challenging, um, but, but it has been for the past three years already, if we think about like COVID and how it hit and how it impacted. So, so um, yeah, I believe that we just need to adjust to the situation and, 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 um, and uh, go forward. And right now, uh, I think for us, we are on the very um, aggressive growth path. So, so I would say our biggest, uh, I wouldn't say challenge, but uh, but uh, I think thing to watch is the uh, that that we can control, we can grow controlled way, and and also stay on the sales curve that that we have expected and estimated. Another question here from a viewer. They would like to know about your market presence and he or she wants to know if you have enough uh, resources, speaking of both staff and um, money, I assume, in order to expand when it, within um, the countries that you are present in today. Another very good question and, and uh, you know, it's like, when do you have enough? Uh, resources or money it's a uh, it, it's um, it's a it's a tough tough one but I would say that um, we have like two different type of markets we have like uh, our target markets and then then our like organic growth markets and uh, we do invest massively into these uh, target markets uh, because we want to gain results there and this means both like staff and act activations and, and so forth but things doesn't really happen overnight, so it will take some time. And then we have these organic markets where we like 
let the market organically grow and we invest when we need, uh, when there is opportunity to invest. But, but let's say that, that this is part of our growth plan and it has been uh, planned and this is also why we are listing the company that we can, we can, uh, we can have the funds we need for, for the growth. Well, um, thank you very much, Valtteri, for uh, joining us today and I wish you uh, good luck now moving forward. Excellent. Thank you, Kaiser, very much. And thank you, everybody.